Gen 4 has got to be my favorite generation of Pokemon since Gen 1. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are home to one of the strongest Elite Four and every child's nightmare back in the early 2000s being Champion Cynthia. I will be attempting to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke using only normal types. Now the normal types is a sort of jack of all trades where they are good in many situations but don't particularly excel at one specific thing. This is why beating a Nuzlocke where any Pokemon that faints must be boxed for the rest of the run. No items from the bag can be used but hell items are okay. I have to play on set mode and I cannot level past the next gym leader's ace Pokemon. I'm also playing additionally with the species clause and lastly all Pokemon must be given nicknames. So sit back and watch as I try to complete a hardcore Nuzlocke using only normal types. We start the run by naming our rival Norman and meeting him on Route 201. We head to Lake Verity where we are immediately jump scared by a pair of Starly. This is where I go ahead and choose the starter Turtrick which gives Norman Chimchar which eventually turns into a Infernate which has the very deadly fighting type. After getting some Pokeballs, we get our one true starter being God himself. I go ahead and put Box Boy, well, in the box, as I check God's stats. And God has a special defense nature which is not too bad, however that is very short lived as we take on our very first trainer and get absolutely destroyed by his Starly. Not a good start. So in attempt 2, God has a neutral nature which is always welcome in a Nuzlocke by the way. Don takes pity on me by showing me how to catch Pokemon, but I mean, come on Don, I'm not a scrub, it's not like I would wipe to the first trainer I meet, I mean, pfft, really? But once again, I actually wipe to a Starly trying to catch it. Great. I guess I deserved that, didn't I? So on attempt 3, I grind a little to get to level 5 before trying to catch Starly, which we do and nickname Birdie. After that, we get our revenge on little Timmy and make our way to Jubilife City. Here we can pick up the TM for workup which is probably the most important TM in the entire run. And we go ahead and pick up the awesome item Quick Clock which is one of the things we'll need for the first gym. Finally we get Rock Smash which is the second important thing we need for the first gym. I meet up with Rourke in the mines and he shows me what he does to his girl on weekends. United States of uh, okay. After witnessing that uh, display of strength, we grind to the level cap which allows Birdie to evolve into Staravia, giving us that awesome intimidate ability. However, Birdie won't be needed as God sends a message by soloing this entire gym. As Rourke sends out his Geodude, I send out God. And knowing that we're going to be in it for the long haul here, I go ahead and set up a defense curl to get to plus 2 thanks to God's simple ability which doubles the effects of all stat growth moves as Rourke sets up a Stealth Rocks. I get to plus 2 with work up before Rourke starts going for a very pesky move called Rollout. Now Rollout can be very very dangerous since it gets stronger with each consecutive hit. So with that we have to hurry and take this thing out as fast as possible. Now we are going to go over the level here but that's okay since the level cap is there to prevent you from leveling past the gym before you challenge them. Now Rourke sends out his next Pokemon being Onyx which allows us to finish setting up to plus 6 attacks so that we can take out the Onyx with just a few rock smashes. This brings out his last Pokemon being Cranidos which is very strong and could outspeed us but God just gets the quick claw proc taking out the Cranidos in one hit. And God celebrates his victory by evolving into his perfect form. And with that, the first badge is ours. Next we run into a couple of clowns back in Jubilife City with these weird bow cuts. We slap them up and continue on our way to Floroma Town, where we can pick up the TM for Pluck, which is very useful for the next gym since it's stronger than Wing Attack. We make our way to the Valley Windworks to rescue a kid's dad from Team Galactic. And this grunt does a big brain move by actually locking me out of the building. So we go steal the key from his less intelligent grunt friends and make our way to Commander Mars. Now Mars is known for ending runs in the early game but with God on my side there is no way we could lose this fight. Mars sends out her Zubat first as I start with God. 
Now I want to set up the plus 2 defense again with that defense curl to be prepared for the Pearl Ugly in the back knowing how strong it is as Zubat misses Supersonic. This gives me the perfect opportunity to fire off 2 headbutts on it taking it out. Mars then sends out her next Pokemon being Pearl Ugly and we know that this thing is going to go for Fake Out in the next turn so we just click Work Up here. We take the flinch and on the next turn we go for Work Up again to get the plus 2 as it goes for Scratch. This allows us to be able to take the Pearl Ugly out in just a few headbutts and rock smashes, granting us an easy victory over Mars in the early game. After beating Mars, we enter Eternal Forest where we can meet up with Cheryl, but more importantly, we can get our next encounter here, which is Baneri. Now we take out this disgusting male rabbit and catch the female instead, and we nickname her Bunny. And Bunny has a neutral nature, but a less useful ability being Klutz, and I know that you can do some interesting things with this ability, but it's still not great. But with that, it's time to take on Gardenia. She sends out her Cherubi as I send out Birdie. Now knowing that she has that Rosary in the back that's super fast, I go ahead here and try to set up to plus 3 using Workup as she fires off 2 Dazzling Gleams and eventually she sets up a Safeguard, bringing me down to at least about a little over half health. But this gives me the perfect opportunity to go ahead and take it out with one pluck. Next her Pokemon being is Turtwig which we can easily take out with one pluck as well, bringing in her final Pokemon, Rose Raid. Now this thing being as fast as it is, it's gonna outspeed and get a Grass Knot, which is a crit by the way, bringing us down to just 4 HP as we heal with an Orange Berry. But we're able to take it out with just one pluck, also being able to steal its berry and eat it for good measure. And with that, We've beaten the second gym. With the second badge now ours, we run into Cynthia, whom we ask if she could sit on my Sam! I I mean, if she happens to have the TM for cut, so we can continue our journey to be the very best. Cynthia graciously hands over the TM in exchange for me doing her bidding next time. With that awkward exchange out of the way, I spend a little time down in the underground, allowing me to catch some pretty cool Pokemon like Swablu. This thing starts as a normal flying type but evolves into a dragon flying type later on so we can't really evolve this thing. I go ahead and name him Cotton and we see his stats being a hasty nature giving him a bit of a speed boosted nature. We enter into one of Team Galactic's bases where we go ahead and try to rescue some Pokemon and Bite Guy from Jupiter's tacky fashion sense thanks to God and making our way to Mount Cornet. On our way there, I run into our next encounter being Hoot Hoot en route to 11, which I catch and name Owl. I later decide to rename him Owly to kind of fit with the theme of leaving Y at the end of a lot of my nicknames. I was also very happy to see him have a special attack boosting nature. After that, we head to Mount Cornet where we meet up with old man babyface Cyrus where, I mean, just look at this guy. He looks so silly in this game. <laughs> Truly a face only a mother could love. Now once we reach Hearthrome City, this is where my lack of knowledge and preparation for this Nuzlocke starts to show. As I go ahead and get this Happini egg from this hiker, I didn't know at the time that I could have just caught a Chansey on the next route, saving me a lot of pain and time here. After riding around like a madman, this Happini finally hatches and boy I gotta say, having an adamant nature makes all that time spent even less rewarding than before. But we go ahead and name it Eggy, and immediately after we evolve it into a Chansey after giving it an Oval Stone. We finally make our way to Veilstone City where we prepare for our biggest challenge yet. You see, Mei Lin has a Lucario which is very fast and hits super hard. And with our team of normies I knew this was going to be a bloodbath. So after getting some very useful TMs from the department store and grinding to the level cap. Owl evolves into the cool Noctowl while Bunny evolves into the And with our upgraded team, we challenge Mei Lin. Mei Lin sends out her Metatite as I start off with God. Now the first thing I want to do here is to try to get off a Yawn before this thing starts firing off Drain Punches. But luckily for me, it just goes for bulk up on the first turn. However, that plus one to Metatite's attack does force me to want to switch to Birdie here to bring it back down to neutral with the Intimidate drop. However, this thing still hits me with a very powerful Drain Punch, bringing me down into the yellow as I eat an Orange Berry. 
This puts me a little over half health as the meta type falls asleep. Now at this point I try to set up to plus 3 attack using that work up but the meta type just gets a very early wake up but thankfully it just goes for flash here. I finish setting up to plus 3 using that work up before getting knocked down deep into the red by another drain punch. Knowing that birdie will go down if I don't attack next turn, I take out the meta type with an aerial ace bringing out her next pokemon being Machoke who we can easily take out with a second aerial ace. Now here is where my problems really begin as Mei Lin sends out her Lucario. Foolishly thinking that I can outspeed this thing, Lucario cracks my bird's skull in half with a drain punch. This is where everything just falls apart as I try to send out God to do something but he just gets KO'd instantly. I try to save the situation with Al by going for Reflect but even that isn't enough and just one by one my team falls losing us the run. So I have to be honest with you guys, I was not prepared for this battle, in fact I was not taking this Nuzlocke as serious as I probably should have. This entire time I have not been using any sort of damage calculations and going purely off of instinct alone just to spice things up a bit. I decided against using damage calcs but that does not excuse me for not doing my homework before taking on these Nuzlocke challenges. So I shrugged off this failed attempt, restarted the game, put on my big boy pants and made my way back to Veilstone City for the rematch. Now after starting over a few times to get a couple of natures I wanted for my team, you may notice that I have Giraffe Ring. I caught it on Route 214 just outside of Veilstone City when I wasn't recording, so sorry about that. I also forgot to record when Chansey evolved into Blitzy. Some of my Pokemon like God and Birdie were in the box after they reached the level cap. I went back down to the underground to catch Lickitung and nicknamed him Thick Boy. Now I noticed that he had an impish nature giving him a little extra bulk. And so with a few extra bodies, I mean uh, brave soldiers, I was ready for the salty run back against Mei Lin. This time I start with Ali. My plan was to stall this Metatite out of drain punches since it was very hard to set up on with bulk up. I used Thief to steal the light clay so it wouldn't be able to extend the turns of light screen to 8. I go for protect as it just sets up a light screen. Now the next turn I wanted to set up a substitute here but another hit takes me down into the red so I'm not able to set up the sub. I decided to go for another protect on the next turn just to stall out another one of those drain punches. Next I switch into cotton just so that cotton can soak up as many hits as he possibly can before going down. I heal up with a citrus berry putting me a little bit over half health and then going for a protect as Metatite just goes for a bulk up this turn. Knowing that the next hit will kill I go ahead and click endure here so we can survive the attack on just 1 HP. However on the following turn I try to go for the protect but don't get it so Cotton has to go down here. Thank you Cotton, you served me well. I send Ali back out just so I can stall out yet another one of those drain punches before swapping out into Birdie. And thanks to Birdie's Intimidate drop we're able to tank another one of those hits. After a little bit more stalling with Birdie using Protect I go ahead and switch back to Owly. Unfortunately this is where Owly goes down. Thank you Owly for your sacrifice. I bring Birdie back in to soak up one last Drain Punch from this Metatite. However not knowing that this Metatite is out of Drain Punches I go ahead and try to swap into Thick Boy here as the Metatite just goes for a Flash. Now Mei Lin switches out here into her Machoke after I try to go for a Disable with Thick Boy. Now I get the Quick Claw proc next turn as Thick Boy goes for a Body Slam here fishing for that Paralysis but I don't end up getting it as it knocks off the Quick Claw. Next turn I have no choice but to let Thick Boy go down here to a low sweep as I bring in Birdie just to try to get rid of this thing. Once again my plan starts to fall apart because this Metatite has Flash. Now at this point I wanted to set up a cosmic power with bunny and a few workups then baton passed that to giraffe but those accuracy drops would just get passed on as well. So I kept swapping back and forth between bunny and birdie to try to find the perfect time to set up. Long story short guys I actually want to pp stalling this thing out of flash until Maylin does the unthinkable. That's right she sends in lucario. 
Birdie has to go down here, which allows me to switch into Bunny safely. Now, I'm able to outspeed here and get off one Cosmic Power, taking massive damage in the process before passing those stats on to Giraffe. Thinking that all hope is lost, I send him in only to take about 40% of damage from one Drain Punch. I lock in Psychic as Lucario does what? That's right, he misses a Screech and then actually goes for a second, allowing us to take it out with one final Psychic. After being spared by the AI, Metatite obviously can't hurt us because it has no moves, so we go ahead and clean it up and beat Mei Lin, but at the cost of over half of our team. Honestly, I could have done that battle a lot better than what I did, so I guess I really am a scrub, aren't I? Darn. Anyways, comment down below and give me your guys' thoughts on the Mei Lin battle. So after losing over half my team and our only Intimidator in the run, I decided to push on after grieving over the loss of my dear friends. Now the pace of the game really starts to pick up though as we head straight for our next gym being Crasher Wake. Both Wake and Mei Lin share the same level cap so we have to be careful as we dodge and avoid a lot of trainers along the way. But we do manage to make our way to Wake in one piece as he begins to send out his Gyarados. Now I know how deadly Gyarados can be since it does have that Intimidate ability and it does pretty decent damage with Crunch and Waterfall. So I have got use Yun here to try to put this thing to sleep. Next turn I go ahead and switch to Bonnie as Gyarados goes for another crunch and then it finally falls asleep. I go ahead and set up a Cosmic Power and pass those to Giraffe just in case this Gyarados does wake up early, which it does. So Giraffe comes in and takes a hard crunch. I hit the Gyarados with a Shockwave bringing it down to about 30% as it goes for crunch taking me down into the red. Wake heals a few turns, wasting his potions as a couple of shockwaves later we're able to finish off the Gyarados as he brings in his next Pokemon being Quagsire. Now I noticed that we weren't doing as much damage with shockwave when I realized that I had a peanut sized brain cause I could have easily just taught Thunderbolt to Giraffe which does more damage than shockwave. Good job me. Anyways, I send in God to get another yawn off as this thing fires off a Scald. So on the next turn, I'm able to get off the Yun as the Quagsire goes for a Mutt Shot here, lowering my speed down by two stages thanks to God's simple ability. Realizing that I forgot to teach God Protect here, I just go for Defense Curl as the Quagsire gets off another Mutt Shot, bringing me down to just 6 HP. I know that the Quagsire won't wake up on the first turn of sleep, so I go ahead and swap out into Bunny to start the setup. Now I know that I could just take this thing out with a Grass Knot, but I wanted to set up a Cosmic Power so that I could regain more health than the Quagsire could dish out with a Drain Punch, so that way I could be prepared and healthy as possible against the Floatzel in the back. So on the next turn, I go ahead and set up a Cosmic Power to get the plus one defense and special defense to be prepared for the Floatzel in the back. So a few punches later, and it finally goes down, leaving Bunny with plenty of health to deal with the Floatzel. Finally out comes the weasel as we soak up an aqua jet in the rain, but we do fire back with a powerful grass knot bringing it down below half as it heals with the citrus berry back up to about 60%. It goes for a pitiful aqua jet and we learn that this weasel is a bit of a masochist as it falls in love from getting smacked around by this sexy bunny. Finally we whack the weasel out of existence with one last grass knot winning us the 4th gym badge. Now I was happy that the 4th gym went much more smoothly than the massacre against Mei Lin. Even though there were a couple of hiccups here and there, it was never anything that I couldn't handle. After running around for a little while, I wound up meeting up with Cynthia again, only for her to rope me into doing some of her dirty work by scaring off a few sickened Psyducks. Cynthia tells me not to open the bag under any circumstances and just throw it at the Psyduck. So I take her advice and I just give it to the Psyducks. So the Psyduck just takes the bag of herbs and run for the hills. Cynthia comes up behind me and asks did I look inside the bag. Uh, of, of course not, why would I do that? Somehow Cynthia does not believe me and so she makes me into her delivery boy by making me deliver her old charm to her granny. Anything for you queen. I mean, uh, I guess, fine, whenever I have time. I'm not simping or anything. Psh. Are you sure about that? Anyways, we do get a reward for this being the TM4 Surf which we will need in order to get to the 6th gym. So I come out of the cave only for old man babyface Cyrus to catch me simping for a Cynthia. Cyrus slaps me out of my simp behavior by giving me a bit of a pep talk. Yo bro, thanks for that. Sorry if I called you a uh, old and stuff. But if there's one person I'll never simp for, it's Fantina as we get ready to go into our next gym battle. 
Now I had a pretty good plan going into this fight which involved exploiting the Drift Bloom's bad move set. So I start off with Bunny here. I go ahead and set up a sub here while the Drift Bloom just goes for fly. This lets me set up a cosmic power keeping the sub from fading away after getting hit by a fly. At this point, I wanted to set up a few workups while Drift Bloom was in the air. I set up another sub so that we couldn't be affected by status moves like Strength Sap and Confuse Ray. This lets me finish setting up and passing those buffs onto Giraffe along with the sub. However, here is where I make mistake number one, by taking out the Drift Bloom too early. Instead, I should have went for an agility here to get Giraffe to plus two so that we'd be able to outspeed the Gengar next. So Gengar comes out. And here is where I make mistake 2. You see Gengar is going to be able to outspeed here and get off a sludge bomb destroying the sub. However we are able to take it out with a shadow ball but I completely forgot about cursed body and so we lose the ability to use shadow ball against Miss Magius. And I completely underestimated just how fast this thing is as it confuses giraffe and he hits himself every single time. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. I was so frustrated with myself for letting this happen, but I had to push on, so I've sent out Bunny. Once again, thinking that I was faster, I'm shocked when this Miss Magius gets the Confuse Ray off first. I am able to set the sub up, but the damage had already been done. So for some dumb reason, I risk another death from Confusion by going for a Baton Pass? The sub didn't even matter because Miss Magis takes it out in just one hit. I really don't know what I was thinking here. I didn't want to lose any more of my team here so at this point it was all up to Eggy. And since I knew that Eggy was a special defense tank, I went ahead and set up a light screen just so we can start firing off as many thunderbolts as possible fishing for that paralysis. Now we did have to fight through the confusion a couple of times but Eggy was able to pull through as we continue to spit out more thunderbolts eventually getting that paralysis. And after many, and I mean many, flamethrowers and thunderbolts, we were finally able to scrape by and finish this battle getting the 5th gym badge. Alright, so after losing so many brave souls, so many brave soldiers, I knew we had to bolster our ranks, and I knew just the place to go. After doing a little bit of research, I paid another visit to the underground. I go into one of the spacious caves where I know we can catch one of two of the Pokemon I'm searching for being Apom. I catch and name him Monkey, which also has a careful nature, giving him a special defense boosting nature. Now the second Pokemon is Munchlax, who we do catch and name Big Man. Now Big Man has an adamant nature which was super awesome to see. Monkey quickly evolved into AP Palm thanks to having that move double hit already in his move set, but he had the pickup ability which is not as good as Technician. Afterwards I rushed over to the mansion to get the Soothe Bell and slap that bad boy on Big Man. And after riding around back and forth, for like an eternity, this man finally decided that he loved me enough to want to evolve into Snorlax. And with my team stronger than ever, we were ready to take on Brian and his Steel types. Now the gimmick behind this gym is having to play around the Trick Room, Sandstorm, and the Light Screen that this Bronzor likes to set up at the beginning of the battle. So I set up a Stealth Rocks to be able to deal with the ability Sturdy from Steelix and Bastiodon in the back for later. And sure enough, Bronzor distorts the very dimensions around us making any Pokemon slower move first. On the next turn, Bronzor fires off a Flash Cannon thanks to Trick Room since it is slower than us. Eggy easily swallows that Flash Cannon whole then fires back with Flamethrower. This does a little bit over half health as I'm also able to get the burn thanks to that Serene Grace which doubles the chances of status effects. Afterwards, I follow up with the Protect in order to stall out another one of those turns of Trick Room as Brian just tries to hit me with a Confuse Ray. The burn damage actually brings Bronzor down into healing range, making this the perfect opportunity for me to swap into Monkey. As Brian goes for a full restore, healing off even the burn as well, which is clearly against the Nuzlocke rules, Brian. He goes for another Confuse Ray here, which I was prepared for and heal off with a Person Berry. This lets me set up a nasty plot getting to plus 2 special attack, however I miscounted just how many turns had passed since his first trick room since it just ended. 
Knowing that another trick room is coming, I just go ahead and click agility here to get the plus 2 speed. Eventually, I do get confused since Bronzor outspeeds me next turn, which winds up making me hit myself in confusion, but I decide to stay in and burn more times of that trick room. Now I knew it was very risky to stay in with confusion since I remember what happened to me last time with Fantina as Bronzo sets up a sandstorm and I decide to burn more turns with a aerial ace here which I actually get it off. I decide not to push my luck next turn as I decide to just go ahead and take another flash cannon to the face before breaking through the confusion and baton passing out of there. From here it's all up to God to bring home the victory. So I go for protect in order to burn the last turn of trick room while Brian tries to hit me with another confused ray. Then I hit this thing with a boosted surf thanks to that mystic water hell item but it just barely lives on just a bit of HP. So now I have to burn through another round of trick room. So next turn I decide to go for Yon here while Brian wants to go and heal his Bronzor again. Ugh. I protect again as he just sets up another sandstorm and then falls asleep. At this point I just really got fed up dealing with this bronzor so I just go ahead and hit it next turn with a surf bringing it down to about 30% HP as it stays asleep. I protect once again just to make sure that this bronzer does not wake up early and go for confused ray but thankfully it stays asleep as trick room ends. This lets me drown the pest as he brings out his next Pokemon Steelix. I protect for the final time in order to burn away that last turn of Sandstorm and also survive the Earthquake so that we can take out the Steelix with one Surf. And since Bastiodon's sturdy ability is broken thanks to that Stealth Rocks, one Surf is enough to soak the dinosaur into an early grave winning us the battle and the 6th Gym Badge. Alright so after beating Brian this is where a lot of Team Galactic stuff starts to pop off in the story. So we meet up with Norman, Dunn, and the Professor to talk about something. But to be honest with you guys, nothing really noteworthy or interesting happens throughout most of this. Just something about a few hundred dead magic carbs at Lake Valor, something about three mythical Pokemon getting Pokenet by Team Galactic. Okay. But no, in all seriousness guys, if you really want to see me take on the evil team more in future Nuzlocks, please leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts about that. Now then, back to me becoming the very best that no one ever was. After walking through more snow than I ever will living down here in the south, we finally make our way to our next gym battle, Candice. Oh boy, so I knew at this point I had been running on fumes after steamrolling through most of the game and doing the Team Galactic stuff as well. So I went into this fight with half a brain. But anyways, I tried to start off by hitting this thing with a yawn as it goes for mist. So on the following turn, I decided to go for Protect to stall out a turn of Hail as well as letting the Snowbird fall asleep. I know that the chip damage from the Hail could become a problem so I decided to set up my own sort of chip damage with Stealth Rocks as the Snowbird stays asleep. Next I send in Bunny as it of course wakes up and goes for another Razor Leaf. So on the next turn I decided to try to set up one Cosmic Power to be to tank the incoming Avalanche a little better. For some ridiculous reason, I figured we could sweep Candace's entire team with just Bunny. So, for the next two turns, I decided to use Work Up to set up to plus two, as we actually dodge one of the avalanches thanks to the power of love. So on the following turn, I go ahead and finish setting up to plus three attack with Work Up, as the Snover decides to just go for Mist. At this point, I was ready to take this thing out with one single drain punch thanks to a critical hit bringing us almost back to full health since Bunny did take quite a bit of damage trying to set up using all those workups. However, the Pokemon I was most afraid of comes out next and I make the biggest mistake of the century. You see, I forget this thing is part psychic so drain punch does less than half damage as Medichan breaks Bunny's cheeks so I have to baton pass her stats to Big Man. But this thing hits like a truck taking out a main character from an isekai anime so I go for a body slam hoping to get that quick claw prop but no we don't get it and so big man is isekai away. Once again trying to save the run I bring in monkey with an aerial ace but this thing survives on like 1 HP as monkey's life ends along with our 6th attempt. <sighs> At this point, I was feeling pretty down in the dumps and worn out. I had sunk hours into this run only to lose to the D's nuts girl. I was a broken man. But you know what? 
I was not done yet. I needed a break from this game so that I could come back a brand new man because I was determined to conquer this challenge. So I made the decision to split this Nuzlocke into two parts. This wasn't initially my intentions, but I promise guys that things get better from here. So please consider subscribing and leaving a like if you enjoyed the video. I'm pretty new to the whole YouTube thing and I'm trying to grow the channel out, so that would mean so much to me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you all in part 2. Take care and I'll see you guys next time.